In today's video, I'm going to give you my list of my top dividend stocks for July 2021, which is this month coming up. Anyways, why do I invest in dividend stocks? It's because I love getting passive income. So let's get down, let's check out some of these amazing stocks. Okay, so the first stock that I am a massive fan of, and you've probably heard me talk about this a few times, is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company Limited, TSM, on the stock market. Now, this is an American stock, not an American company, but it is an American stock, currently getting traded at $120 per share, and its dividend is not massive. Its forward dividend is 1.5%, 1.5%, so it's a heck of a lot better than interest, but at the same time, the growth is definitely there. There, and we're going to talk about that a bit later. Its average share volume is 8.9 million shares traded every single day, and its PE ratio is 32, which is kind of high when it comes to what I normally would invest in, but at the same time, 32 for the type of stock this is, which is a semiconductor stock, definitely worth a look at this valuation. Especially when you start comparing companies like this with companies like AMD as well as NVIDIA. Uh, 32 is not that bad of a price, but something else that we really have to keep an eye on with this company is of course the chip shortage that's happening worldwide. While that's happening, this stock's going to continue to go higher because they make the chips. However, there is also one more thing that could make this a massive downside is, of course, the China and Taiwan uh, relations. Not the greatest. China wants Taiwan. Taiwan doesn't want China. And whenever that happens, there's going to be fights. And who knows what's going to happen with this stock. However, it is worth noting that. Now, as we can see, while this chip shortage was happening, we have had some massive growth. However, we are starting to see a little bit of a downside. However, what I really wanna focus in on is this. We have a straight line down, and then we can have another. If this was on the actual one year chart, you'd be able to see this easier. But as we can see, it's actually recently broken through the flag on the top of the flag, which then means that there's going to be a potential upside. Now this is what I really like. Their dividends aren't exactly standard where it's going to be, hey, raising all the time. We can see that right here. However, considering how good of a dividend they're still paying, for how much money that they are currently investing in their company, this is still really good. I, I still really like this. Something else to pay attention to is the fact that they've had four really good quarters, one being ridiculously blown out. And then of course in 2020, they had a massive revenue and earnings beat as well as a massive revenue and earnings, just absolute, just amazingness. Like look at this, they more than doubled potentially, I think they tripled their their actual earnings and just absolutely amazing company, doing really strong, really killing it right now. Next is Morgan Stanley, and this is actually a very interesting stock. I don't think I've ever talked about Morgan Stanley on this channel. It is a bank in the United States, which I love banks, and it currently trades at 3%. Well, why is that? Just the other day, it was trading at 1.5%. Why is it now trading at three? It's because they doubled their dividend. The American Fed, they allowed the banks to finally raise their dividends as of June 30th, and guess what happened? Morgan Stanley doubled their dividend. This is what I'm talking about. Once these banks are allowed to like are allowed to raise their dividend, it's going to be pretty crazy. We see some banks going and raising their dividend by 40 or 50 percent. I think Bank of America did it around 17, if I remember correctly. Like some of these banks are really raising their dividends huge, and I think that's going to be the same with Canadian banks as well. And we're going to talk about Canadian banks in a bit. And this is what I mean by. Morgan Stanley doubles their dividend and Bank of America raises their dividend by 17%. Another article, Morgan Stanley doubles its dividend as most banks raise payouts following Fed stress tests. Absolutely amazing news. They have been on the rise just like every single bank and I would say that that hopefully will continue. We did see a double bottom there which is why it briefly raised higher. So this is still looking like a very strong company to own. Now of course dividends are amazing. They raise their dividends all the time. Of course they couldn't raise them for a while but now they have doubled their dividends. So um, yeah that happened. 
And as we can see, they've had four blowout quarters. They're just rocking on all cylinders. One of the few banks that actually did well in 2020. And just just continuing to just absolutely be amazing. I, I just can't say enough good things about Morgan Stanley right now. All the stuff that I've been reading, the financials that I've been looking at, I think that this is going to be like the golden child of the United States banking system right now. And I think that it could continue to run very for a very long time. Next is Toronto Dominion Bank TD, and it's trading at $86 per share as of right now. And they pay a 3.6% dividend. They haven't been able to raise a dividend for over a year. What's it going to look like when they are able to raise a dividend? Usually TD Bank is around 4%, maybe a bit better. Up, upwards of 5%. I think I bought it once when I was younger at like 4.7 or 4.6%. Like usually they have a much higher dividend, but again, they cannot raise their dividend and average volume is 5 million shares traded every single day. They are also the cheapest, one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest. And they are, CIBC, CIBC is, the, is another one that's in that 11 e EPS earnings per share range and both of these banks are really good but 11.86 percent for cibc and 11.18 for td both really cheap td is the cheapest big six bank in canada right now so definitely a good buy when you look at their five-year chart you're looking at some great growth now this is a two-year chart we've seen of course a stagnation a bottom and then now they are starting to rise up they've they've kind of consolidated a bit but whenever you have that kind of a run they're going to consolidate it doesn't matter what what company it is when you look at the five-year chart for the past about I would say two years they've been in a holding pattern not really doing too much and ever since everyone's figured out hey it doesn't matter if there's a recession TD Bank is going to be making money hand over fist any day and that's what we are going to see and of course when interest rates rise they're going to rise even higher again couldn't raise a dividend for well over a year. Usually they raise a dividend once a year. Very rarely they'll do it twice a year, but usually it's once a year and they still haven't been able to. So I would assume as of right now, their usual of six to 10% dividend raise. They haven't done it for a year. That's going to be added on to another six to 10% again this year. You're probably going to be looking at when they can raise a dividend closer to that 15 to 20% range. And if they keep on holding it off until next year, again, it's going to be a, an even bigger dividend raise. It's going to be making news. And because merely because of the fact that how much they're going to raise their dividend by, in my opinion, I think their stock is going to skyrocket when they announce it. Four great financial quarters, not an amazing, uh, not an amazing 2020, but at the same time, we can see that they are currently making more money when it comes to earnings than they did in 2019 with less revenue, which is absolutely fantastic. CIBC is another one that I've always loved in the past because they generally raise their dividend every two quarters or even sometimes every quarter. And I really personally like that. They currently pay a 4% dividend. They also haven't been able to raise a dividend for well over a year. They trade on average of 1.5 million shares. They are CM on the stock market. And their PE, like I've already said, is 11.89, which is also one of the cheapest. I think they're second cheapest right now in Canada for the big six banks. For their five-year chart, they haven't really done anything until recently. So at least if you were holding it back here, which I was, and I was buying more on the way down. I literally went all in when they were at like $85 a share. And I bought at 100 I also bought at 90 And then I just went all in there because I knew that as soon as there was this big, massive drop, I knew that there was nothing wrong with their underlying business. It was just dropping because of a virus. And because of that, I was like, well, you need to go well in. You need to, you, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how much money, every penny is going to be going into the Canadian banks. And so at the end of the year, if I get a tax return back, let's say I get $200 or $400 or whatever it is, I actually stash that whole amount into my RSP, mainly because of one thing. That now is still my money and I put it into an RSP. It's still my money. It's still there for retirement. But now, 
because of how our taxes work in Canada, I now, by stashing that three, four, five, whatever hundred dollars into my RRSP that I get back from the government, now that makes me technically, according to the government, make four or five hundred dollars less uh, at the end of next year because that's just how taxes work. So then I can use essentially found money, which in my opinion is found money, even though it's not, but it, let's say it is, and I can use that to basically decrease my earnings next year. And that's that's how I like to run things. Now, this next one is the Canadian Apartment Properties Real Estate Investment Trust, car-un.to. And of course, this one pays 2.3% dividend. And it's got a nice growth story. It's got 350,000 shares on average being traded per day, which is still really, really good. PE ratio is around 10 and a half, which is really low in my opinion. I'm not huge into REITs, but this one actually has a nice growth story. Of course, you know, this happened, but it's still growing. It's still trying to get back to its all-time high. It hasn't hit that yet, so I think that there could be at least a 2 to $3 jump before it starts stag uh, stag uh, stagnating out. However, at the same time, we never seen that in the past, recently anyways, so I think this could be a nice growth story coming up over the next few months. It pays 11 and a half cents every single month, which is nice to see. Now, of course, just like everyone, we did see a massive drop when it came to 2020. However, when we start looking and really digging into it, the actual revenue went up, but the earnings went down. So to me, that just shows that there's gonna be bigger growth happening very soon. And then the last company is Visa. Again, not a massive dividend payer, but it does pay a dividend. I just think this is gonna be a nice growth play while getting a dividend. 6.8 million shares traded every single day. PE ratio is a bit higher than what I would like to see. However, look at that growth, just absolutely amazing. Uh, if you wanna really, really pinpoint down to um, a little bit of a flag going potentially, um, yeah, if you look at the five-year chart, it's looking really good. It's broken out past the point. That's a really long, drawn-out point as well. And in my opinion, that just looks really good. I hope that this video has given you some ideas as to what to invest in, some ideas as to what to do with tax money even. And of course, I hope that this video has helped you become financially sound and rich and famous and everything like that. Anyways, I hope to see you guys again next time. Hit that like button and subscribe.